Hey guys, if you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate you. Now let's get to it. What's up guys, Average Gamer signing on here, back with another video. And today we're gonna start a new series, man. We're unscripted, man. I kind of just talk about things that are on my mind, current events, topics within the video game community. But today I wanna center it around something I've been meaning to talk about for a while. And that is kind of the idea, perception, that fighting games are kind of hard to get into, to play on a consistent level. Um, now this has been a conversation for many years, but I think you started to see changes, particularly with the previous console generation, uh, PS4, Xbox One, where fighting games have kind of turned into really trying to cater to new players, trying to get as many people in the door, opening the gate, if you will. Uh, this has been to the to the uh, dismay, I guess you could say, of a lot of legacy players that we call them, as these games have arguably become more simplified. Think like the change from Rev 2 to Strive. Uh, even some people would argue Street Fighter 5 to 6, but that gets a little bit uh, into the weeds. I think it's a more nuanced conversation than people like having. But essentially, that's the topic we're going to be discussing today. Uh, fighting games are hard to get into. Why? What's the problem? Um, to start, I just think, I think more so than any other genre of games, I think fighting games are in a very unique conundrum. I think more so than other games, fighting games design-wise kind of inherit this idea of competitive nature like when i think of you know single player games action rpgs uh adventure games you know things of that nature they don't really have a competitive aspect to it and i think with fighting games you're literally kicking someone's ass like <laughs> like that's the whole point you know so i think this naturally brings about competitiveness similar to like moba games Maybe like your League of Legends. You know, when League of Legends first came, we could easily see like this is going to be a competitive game. That's kind of be, and that's kind of going to be the primary mode of it. Um, that's why you know fighting games, especially the older ones, like all they had was arcade and versus mode, essentially. And that made sense, right? Like a lot of these games were in arcades. You would put a quarter in, some some other guy would come over, like, hey, you want to run some? And I was like, hey. Why not? You know, you kick each other's asses, then you get each other's phone numbers. If they had phones back then, we're going to say that they did. Anyway, um, I think nowadays, PS4, Xbox One generation, then now into the PS5. I don't know what console Xbox has now, uh, but I think, as I said earlier, these games are starting to become a bit more casual, new player friendly. They tone down some mechanics. For the interest of simplicity, they kind of adopted this easy to get into, hard to master kind of style. Um, is this a good thing? Well, kind of a nuanced conversation. Good to some, annoying to others. I would personally argue it's a net positive because to me, and this just be my bias because I'm not like a pro, pro player or anything. For me, as many people playing fighting games, the better. You know, the more people playing fighting games, the better. I think seeing Evo and seeing all the eyes on it, whether it was pro players or not, or just seeing, you know, everyone who tuned in on Twitch or people who just went there just to experience the festivities. Like, I want as many people to enjoy that as possible because I think fighting games are wonderful, you know? I think opening the gate only leads to our success. And I think in the esports era, it's just so much more important because sponsorships are kind of the name of the game now, you know? And that comes with more eyes on your game. So more eyes means more attention, means more sponsorships, which means more money for pros to complete, compete for, excuse me. But I do think it's kind of hard because that's the viewer aspect. So you can load up Twitch, that's free, you know? All you gotta do is have a device with internet, you know? Um, you can load up Twitch, you can watch it all day. In terms of the sales of fighting games, right? Which I think is the primary aspect of this conversation. I think fighting games are in a very unique spot because there is already a preconceived notion about them that has existed for decades, right? They're hard, they take too much time, getting good at them is gonna take hours, and that is essentially like an investment. 
And a lot of people, you know, kids, adults, all have responsibilities, gotta go to school, gotta go to work, gotta provide for the fam. They may not have the time to make that a worthwhile investment. So they go play other things. The barrier of entry is a little bit harder than let's say Call of Duty where you just load up a game and start shooting shit. <laughs> uh, excuse my French. Um, I think it also becomes a little bit problematic because us as gamers tend to not be one dimensional. You know, I think you think video gamers at this point, we kind of play a lot of things like even fighting game players, even pro fighting game players, even pro players in general, like their main game is not the only thing they play, you know? And then us as casuals, like we play a tons of things. Like take me for instance, I play fighting games, you know, I played Tekken for really since I was like six, starting with Tekken 2, Tekken 3 and what have you. But I dabble in single player games. I dabble in uh, RPGs. I dabble in shooters, battle royales, all that stuff, man. Um, and it becomes kind of hard because that preconceived notion of fighting games plays into that. Let's say you were a kid, like you were a teenager, right? And in a year's time, you could only buy a set number of games or you were forced to wait till Christmas for uh, Santa to drop down the window. Cause I'm sure, you know, got, got the kids watching, you know, Santa's coming folks. Anyway, um, it gets kind of weird because what do you prioritize? If you're someone who's never been into never been into fighting games before, but you've always wanted to try it, but there's like this preconceived notion that you're still scared of, you may shy away from buying that fighting game for you to finally try out in order to get games that you know are going to get you satisfaction. Like for example, are you gonna buy MK1 that comes out in like a couple weeks at the recording of this video? Or are you going to wait one more month at the end of October? Well, well, I guess the beginning of October, I think, and get Spider-Man 2, you know? It's all about priorities. And that preconceived notion that fighting games are hard and a tough investment and really take long to get good at, that kind of plays into that. Like, if I'm, if I'm going to take all this time just to get decent at this fighting game, man, I may as well pick up Spider-Man 2. I mean, hell, they're the same price. I mean, <laughs> I pay $70 for this. What if I end up hating it? I pay $70 for this, I know it's gonna be outstanding because I love the first game so much. And it looks like nothing's changing really. And the changes that are being made are just more gadgets, more enemies, more iconic villains, you know? So I think that kind of plays into it as well. Even me, like for someone who loves fighting games, obviously I talked about people who've never played before, but even if you're like an experienced fighting game fan, um, Tekken 8, it comes out in like January. Um. But that's my main game for anyone who doesn't know. But I play all sorts of fighting games. Like I play Street Fighter 6, I got that on release. I've never really been into NRS games. Um, and this is kind of my story. Uh, the only NRS game that I've really enjoyed was MK9. But even back then I didn't play it that much because I, I wasn't really good at it, A. And B, I was a kid at, at that point. And I had just so much other things I wanted to play. I was still into like the Nintendo Wii, you know? I was still spamming up Mario Galaxy, you know? Um, did that come out in 2009? It probably did. Anyway, bottom line, I had other things to do, all right? But then I started getting uh, into other NRS games, you know? Didn't play MKX, but primarily like Injustice, right? Which was a big thing. Like the barrier of entry for fighting games when they have iconic characters goes down significant significantly. You know, you see like Smash, hyper successful on um, Dragon Ball Fighters hyper successful so Injustice have DC for characters DC fighting games sign me up you know I love superheroes and I like fighting games because I played Tekken and then MK9 up to that point uh yeah I hated it <laughs> uh really both Injustice games I just never got a chance to get into the neutral of that game just didn't speak to me really it just didn't amuse me as much as I thought it did and like I wasted money on those things you know like, I could have got that or I could have got, like, what was the game that came out over that time period? Like, I could have got Overwatch, although I did eventually got, get Overwatch, but that was later on, you know? Could have got The Last of Us, things like that, you know? But I, I wanted to try that kind of fighting game, and I was drastically disappointed. So now, another real game that comes out afterwards, I'm gonna be like, uh, do I really want to, you know? Do I really wanna risk it? And if I do, it's gonna be at like a price drop. 
but that's like potentially months if not a year down the line especially we're talking about mainstream fighting games your your uh, street fighters your tekkens what have you i think games like guilty gear are, are a bit easier in that aspect as they'll price drop like within like six months maybe um six to eight months I, i'm actually pretty sure guilty gear was exactly six months before it got its first price drop at least at least on the psn store i don't know about anything else um so yeah, I think that's the biggest issue. It's just when gamers care about so much and they want to buy so much and they only have limited funds to spend money on games, excluding like gifts and stuff, obviously, they're going to go to the things they know. And if you are not a fighting game fan, it's going to be really hard for you to wait to spend money on a fighting game. And if even if you are an experienced uh, player of fighting games, even if you are a fan of fighting games, you would really only gravitate to the ones that you already like. You still may not be able to branch out in that aspect. So I think that also hurts sales in the short and long term. Um, primarily in the short term. As for the long term, let's say as you, as I stated earlier, you pick up the game on like six, eight months after it comes out. Well, that also kind of contributes to the preconceived notion, you know, like you pick up a fighting game four, four, six, eight months out. You finally got the money you're like yeah let's try it out but then everyone's like godlike and you get your ass kicked right and like getting your ass kicked no is no fun like it, it inhibits progress you know you kind of feel down on yourself it hurts the mental and you kind of just a lot of players just legitimately give up now not a good mentality to have right but it just it's something that's going to happen it's, it's intuitive to us as human beings so it's hard to fault people for it and in that regard it hurts because dang I waited all this time, I bought the game, I got my ass kicked, I hated it, I guess I was right not buying it on release. But the thing is, and this is the interesting conundrum with fighting games, fighting games are really hard to get into, they're really hard to sell for $60, $70, but playing a fighting game on release is the best time to play it because everyone's new everyone's learning like you are and no one knows what's really going on so it's kind of this weird thing like okay i either trade my money for the full price of a game that would probably be better off because i get to learn with a bit more efficiency and a bit more community in terms of learning with other people but of course there's still the risk that i don't end up liking it versus paying less I get my ass kicked and I still probably won't like it like and at that point fighting games are in a really tough spot which is why you see a lot of fighting games not focus on just the core fighting of the game you see a lot of single player stuff you see obviously NRS always they've always had heavy story modes they pretty much pioneered that for fighting games you saw KOF even have at least a little bit of story tied to it you see Street Fighter 6 with a whole world tour mode now um, we'll see what Tekken does with its story but you start seeing those single player aspects essentially and it really makes the appeal of paying 60 70 dollars a bit better to swallow but the preconceived notions are still there so you can make the game look good you can put single player content in but at the end of the day if the gameplay is not appealing if it doesn't elicit fun and excitement it's only going to be short-term benefits yeah you'll get the 60 dollars from a revenue from the sale that they buy it on gamestop amazon psn store whatever steam what have you but are is the player retention going to be there and that's the gameplay of it and this is where again we go into the whole debate legacy appeal to legacy appeal to casualness i don't that's a nuanced conversation and honestly it deserves its own video uh, comment below if you want me to talk about that but I think the bottom line is I think games are getting better. You look at Street Fighter 6 with it with its modern controls. Uh, you look at Tekken 8 what they are doing with the execution. Um, I think games are getting better at drawing that line and kind of appeasing both sides where casuals they can come in and they can get a good experience. Things do high damage, uh, motion inputs are not that hard or you have the option to get rid of them entirely. And what they do, they feel impactful, they feel engaged, and they feel like what they're doing, they see on the screen of it having big effects. And that's what they like. That gives them the retention, that gives them the boost to have them keep going. But if you're a legacy player, you still have that hard execution. Remember in Tekken 8, they did this where they dumbed down a lot of the uh, 
harsh inputs and stuff but if you still do it correctly if you still do it like with great time and great execution you get like a damage bo boost or something right uh funnily enough it's only when they don't do that that i think you start having problems um take like guilty gear strive for instance where they kind of just dumbed down the game and they didn't do a ton to reward high execution. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think the RC system in Strive is fantastic. The way they've consolidated all these different mechanics and aspects of the game into this one kind of unifying tool, I think that's really cool. And then you have things like Fast RC that more, like if you look at lower level play, they're not really doing that. Um, but, I mean, if you've seen Rev 2, the depth that game has gameplay wise, like it doesn't even compare to Strive in my opinion. It just exceeds Strive by so much. And I think that's an interesting conversation, like gameplay wise, what do we do about that? And I think Street Fighter and Tekken are probably the way to go. But even those games have holes, you know, like take a character in Tekken 8, we saw Martial Law, who was my main, one, well, one of my mains in Tekken. His, his execution is gone, like I don't, I tried playing them. I didn't. Let me know in the comments if I get if I get this wrong. By the way, but I don't think there's any benefit to doing the old school legacy harder execution to just doing the easy stuff. In that regard, like legacy players do have a point. Like, okay, you're just simplifying the game for the sake of simplifying. It's not simplifying with a purpose, and I think that's the primary thing. Simplifying a game just to get casuals in the door doesn't work. You need to simplify things with impact, with importance. Um. But, I guess on the flip side of that, it's working. I mean, Strive was incredibly successful. <laughs> so, I don't know, like, what the line is, really. It's a very arbitrary thing to have. Do we ca How much do we cater to ca Do we 60% cater to casuals, 40% to legacy players? Do we do 50-50? Well, if that's the case, we're probably going to make both players upset with us eventually. And we know the age-old kind of tale, like... Legacy players, and this is why I think legacy players need to kind of chill out, but I understand why it happens. Legacy players are almost never happy. You're never always going to appease them. Casual players, they're a little bit more, uh, what, what's the term? Easy to appeal, I guess? Because they're new, they don't really know much about the franchise, so as long as you do something cool, I mean, it's fine. We're like, you, oh my god, Dolphin Girl does big damage. I'm new to Strive, I like that, let looks dope, let me play her. Versus like a legacy person like May had all this cool sh cool shit in the other game, bro. You don't even know, bro. You don't even know. Back in my day, they always hit you with that line. Back in my day, May used to do all of this cool shit you didn't even know about. And like, you see with even like Street Fighter now, like it happened like a couple weeks ago. People started calling Street Fighter Six scrubby, and it's like, bro, what? <laughs> they called it more scrubby than Street Fighter Five. I'm like, do you remember Street Fighter Five? <laughs> But, so again, to some extent, pros will never be, pros, legacy players, they'll never be happy. Any minor change will piss them off. So I think there is some wiggle room to say, you know what, I mean, we do want to appeal to you guys. We still want to keep the game recognizable. Like, we still want to make sure, you know, this is Street Fighter, this is Tekken, this is Mortal Kombat, this is KOF. But at the end of the day, we do have to evolve. And I think that's the main core that Bandai, Arc System Works, Capcom, they've really taken over the past 10 years. It's time to evolve. You saw Tekken 6, big changes, not only in terms of gameplay, which they always do with the drive mechanic, but also in terms of character designs. Like this is probably the biggest overhaul character design wise that we've seen. Like these characters look noticeably different than what they have in like Street Fighter 3, 4, and 5. And then with Tekken, it's even more so. Like, you have characters looking completely different. Like, uh, Nina. Like, um... What's my dog's name? I forget. Anyway, Paul Paul Phoenix. That was, a, that was the name I'm thinking of. Like, you see these characters look far different. But they're still recognizable, and I think that's the key. At the very least, the game must be recognizable to the Legacy fan. And I think that's the primary thing. But, in short, you know, games are evolving, you know? <laughs> I think the appeal to casuals has to always be there because let us not forget every pro player and this is how this is how I'll end the video off thank you guys for listening to my TED talk every pro player was once a casual every pro player went into the arcade or bought it on a home console 
played the game and something about it just stuck out to them as so appealing that they wanted to invest the time to get better at it. I want that for other people. And although, yes, they got into it, like older school pros that you see have had 10 plus year careers. When they got into it, they got into it primarily just because of its competitive nature or they just found a character that they loved. Nowadays, um, again, it's the evolution. You want players now to feel like they can come in and learn without getting their butts kicked. And this requires a lot of things. You know, this requires good graphics. This requires good online. This is, this requires diverse character rosters with differing play styles. This requires single player content. But, it, but companies are doing that now, which is really nice. And I think the FGC, you know, the fighting game community is one of the best out there. And I want people to experience that community. And if I, as technically a legacy player can sacrifice just a little bit to get those guys in like if i have to sacrifice korean backdash if i if i have to uh sacrifice you know legacy mechanics that have existed in games before but it serves in adding players to this great community that i'm going to do that and i think that's the point i kind of want to end up on end off of uh thank you guys for watching uh, you enjoy the video, like and subscribe. Comment below what you have for me. I'm always interested in hearing your thoughts, always interested in replying. Uh, hopefully, I will get my new structure video out this weekend. Hopefully. Uh, so, yeah, Average Gamer signing off. Thanks for watching.